Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, here in New York, it's the Ramble, and I'm Alex Bennett, and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson, and you know, we, we I probably spent more time with her than I have with any wife or girlfriend or... You know. Yeah, I, I think so, because four hours a day, that's 20 a week, yeah. and then we do things together, you know, but uh, yeah, that's that's longer than most people's marriages, both yeah. in years now, and in uh, time yeah. of day. And, and the audience always, it, it, did, you, did you mind this, by the way, the audience had a mistaken impression that we must have had some kind of relationship at one time. Yeah. I think you'd let them think that. Let them think whatever they want. No, it never bothered me uh, at all. Um, no, if it if it makes the show more enjoyable for them, go for it. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. but nevertheless, I mean, it, it was the most. It was a ridiculous notion. Not that you are not an attractive woman. Okay, I that's not the that's yeah. not the point. The point <laughs> is, I always made it a hard and fast rule that I would never have a relationship. With somebody I worked with, because well, see, especially go, it, what it can only go south. It can only turn on you, because it just will. I mean, your relationship then you become kind of precious about your relationship or your job. And if you well, well, let's say, let's say this, you might find this a little ugly notion. Okay. <laughs> okay. That one night. I smoked too much pot, and you drank too much liquor, and we wound up in bed together humping, all right? This is, yeah, yeah. this is a hypo. Yeah. The next morning, we come in to do a show. Got to be the most awkward feeling you would ever feel. Ever. Like, see, and I just was never willing to take that chance. But the closest I ever came was there was a very talented, but um, also very, uh, un very erratic, a personality on Live 105 before we went water and rock. And we were, I, I loved hanging out with him. We were, we had so much fun. And he wanted it to be a romance. And I just said, no, this is not a romance. And when I finally, uh, you know, phrased it that way, um, he did not take it well. And I admired his creative way of expressing his dissatisfaction. He would make these, I don't know how he did it, but he would splice together these insulting messages from movies and uh, TV shows and everything, splice them all together so that it was basically two or three minutes of just diatribes of insulting me. And then he would leave them, wait till three o'clock in the morning because I gotta be up to do the show. So then he would uh, wait until three in the morning and leave them on my answering machine, which of course, you know, I admired on one level, but I had to be up, and so it was messing with my sleep. Yeah, but uh, do, did I know this guy? You did, not well, but you knew this guy. Yeah, and he was a great guy in so many ways, and then he'd do these things and feel horrible about it. And uh, it was just... Yeah, but it, it never it, it, it never works, and I if you, ad never. if you admire the person that you're working with, and they contribute to your betterment, helping the show and so on you don't want to do anything to destroy that relationship no you know and so it's just an imbalanced approach i you know if you if i've heard that whole that horrible phrase don't you know don't shit where you eat or what is that yeah you don't 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 shit where you eat you know yeah i hated that phrase because it's so crass but it makes sense i yeah. gotta say yeah. And uh, it just because one is going to go on longer than the other and it will create. And I go back. I've, we've said this before. Lori and I actually slept in the same bed for a whole night. We did. In Ibiza. Yeah, in Ibiza. More than a night. It was a week in Ibiza. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was a week in Ibiza. Yeah. I mean, we might have had. Because what I told you was 
Lori, after we're through with the Olympics in uh, Barcelona, uh-huh. let's get on a plane and go to Ibiza. You're going to love this place. Yeah. And then it was, you were so right. Not it anymore. Crazy. It's supposed to be terrible now. But. It's overcome with commercialization and uh, a gay nightclub. Yeah. But anyway, Vegas. I took you there, and, and I think well, the only room we could get was a room with one bed. I think, a, a double, because uh, I, I thought that was the case, but it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, no. So we slept in the same bed together, and and nothing untoward happened. Although we were making a video, and we did a fake. Uh, oh, yeah. Malori, uh, you know, Alex. Here we are in Ibiza. Oh, and then <laughs> fade to black. You know. You always make the most fun videos. They're like travelogues of where we. Yeah. Were. I would love the one of uh, Ibiza because that was so fun. I don't know where it is. I know it's just all the things Man, that we yeah, it's hard to put your fingers on. Yeah, every year, every year when I would go to Ibiza, I would bring a camera, right? For some reason yeah. or not, the camera didn't work. Oh, I mean, it, it it went bad, or the video didn't shoot, or something. This happened about three times in a row. And I was beginning yeah. to think it was a curse. And yeah. finally, yeah. I got a camera that worked there, and I managed to videotape the entire island. You know. While yeah, I was there, you had soundtracks to them, and they were they were little movies. Yeah. Were See, my color out. now is back to the way it was. It means you're healthy. Is your nose cold? You're healthy. See, watch what happens, folks. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the video. Okay, there okay. goes the video. It just says Alex Bennett. Then we'll turn the video yes, back on and look at the color. They think he's in Aruba. You know, but yeah. there we go. Look at the color. Right, it's like you had somebody standing by with blush. You know, and I don't have this thing set so that it does auto white balance. You know, so it shouldn't change. But oh, you're over my head there, mister. Anyway, That's above my pay grade. Experimenting. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, so um, uh, people people never understood that. That, you know, that, yeah, we had a great relationship going on the air. Uh, yeah. And you keep it that way. You know, it's kind of like... Uh, uh, I, I've had women in my life that I absolutely adored and loved, and then we got married, and all that changed. <laughs> well, see, that's it. I just didn't want to do anything. I was having so much fun on the air with you. I didn't want to do anything that would jeopardize that. Exactly. I mean, which which I knew going in, you know, even if something, because there was definitely a warmth and affection that developed between us, but that was better than romance. Oh anyway. no! It, 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 well, it was a true love of each yeah. other and our relationship together, and you know, and and it, people pro- can probably see it here, you know. Yeah, it's a very it's just, easy relationship. Romance is wonderful, but it's hard to maintain that. Joan Rivers had a good bit about it. You know, we're in the early stages of your relationship. You chase each other around the couch. Get me? Are you going to catch me? And then she's like. By the, the third year, it's like, catch me, yeah, try to catch me. I'll well, show you, you my You way. know, I, 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 at the time that we were doing all of this, uh, and you probably knew it as well as you, oh, that's, that's you been happening late. That's, ha- that's been happening lately, too. It's like dystopian influence. Look at that's that. the way the world's going to look. Of a, all of a sudden, my green screen, right, so I He's just screwed, I, I go exactly. here to you know, I, I I gotta fix it okay mm. all right go from and, green and there we go green. and now I'm back to my green screen yeah I don't well, I don't understand it. it it could be something with Zoom you know they change their thing all the time so well Christy Frazier the former producer whenever like a lot of things like that were going on she'd say it was what uh, Mercury in retrograde. It was affecting all because our uh, sound. We've got a sound bar, and then you don't know if it's the TV itself or the sound bar that's freaking out. Just to, I just like turn it on. If it works, great. If not, I do. Well, Marjorie, else. Marjorie has this attitude. If something breaks, Alex, fix it. Yeah, I tend to. Do and that and, and first thing I get up in the morning, you know, I'm barely awake. I'm like, you know, groggy. I'm the worst, worst person to wake up. Uh, it was amazing yeah. I did a morning radio show because I think the first hour of that show every morning, I never remembered, <laughs> you know. And neither did you because you had to sober up. But anyway, 
that was until that was in the later years. In the later <laughs> years, yeah. Well, you, you would get probably so drunk the night before that when you woke up, you were still drunk. Maybe that might have happened sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes was, maybe you didn't go to bed at all. I don't know. You know, I never. There did. were no. There were no. No, I never did that because to me that's just I need that sleep reprieve or that reset. I, I never knew provide. much about your personal life. You know. Yeah. It, and it I really, was, uh, I really didn't want to know. Yeah, and I was in a disastrous relationship that was basically people that two people that used excess to excess. Yeah. <laughs> It was just, but that, and you tend to adopt when you're having a fling with somebody, you kind of adopt their habits. Yeah. And or you can't, if you don't just put up, right. put your feet right. And that's when things kind of take a, they take a Well, I think one of the reasons I didn't want to know about your private life was because Laurie Thompson was in many ways a character. This is true. You know, yeah. and I wanted to be able to play to that character, not to the real person who, oh, last night I was with so-and-so and this guy is now I'm going out with him and he sucks. And I, <laughs> I never got any of that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, me, and that was boring. It, you know, I don't think I talked that much about my own personal relationships, although whatever girl I was going with at the time. I made into no, only a, if they went bad. If they went bad, you're, you're no, very sensitive. But, but they went. But they, uh, I, I turned them into characters. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, and so when I talk about them on the air, I talk about my girlfriend. And in one case, a fish princess. I remember. And the reason princess. I named her fish princess is she owned a fish business on Fisherman's Wharf. She and yeah, her husband. Yeah, just to give her anonymity, to keep yeah, her anonymity. Yeah, I just called her fish princess. Yeah, uh, and I can't remember. There's another one. I, uh, the one I you went with for the long time. Was huh? a cop? I was thinking you dated a cop or a firefighter, some woman with a very physically demanding job, and that was. Kind was of that the one woman who's with UPS? Yes, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. that was Kathleen. Yeah, you always dated reasonably smart women. I wasn't real crazy about Fish Princess. I thought she was just kind of. I thought she was using it a little bit. Well, but. I was you know, using that, her too. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so everybody's happy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, you always brought home brought home uh, some pretty smart women. Yeah, but so I turn I turn the women in my life into characters. Yeah. You know, um, one uh, one reason was so that they would never feel that I was necessarily putting them down when I talked about them in a joking manner. Right. I, I was talking. I was talking about fish princess. I wasn't right. talking about you know. You yeah, but yeah. and that's why they became you know avatars in a way. Yeah, but, it, but most people didn't know about my personal life. They they did know that I was going with this girl. I went with her eleven years. Yeah, I I liked her. A lot. And we broke up eleven times. Yep, I had a relationship like that in college, and it's just it's a pattern. That's what it is. It's a, have it and finally, have finally, it. the reason it was over with is uh, she said, uh, 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 I, in fact, I was renting a house for us to live in. Uh, and the day we were supposed to go up and t get the, you know, the keys and sign the lease, um, she, uh, she said, no, she said, I'm not going to move in. I'm going, yeah. we went through all of this and now you're not going to move in. And she said, no, and I'm breaking up with you. And this was like the what? 11th time, right? Double and wedding. I knew, I knew that when she broke up with me, it wasn't over. I could probably persist and and whatever. And finally, I decided within me, I'm never going to go back to that. You know. You yeah. You have to make a really hard and fast decision. Not fast, but have yeah. to stick to it when you say you're breaking up with someone that you have a pattern like that with. Because I did the same thing. Yeah. My first big boyfriend that I thought I was going to marry, and we'd gone together since I was. 14 and uh, we did that off and on until I was 22 yeah. and it just got after a while you became am I this lame that I can't figure out what's going wrong or I you it was important to you the relationship was important that you figure out well I want to figure out if we can stop doing this right get over this hurdle yeah but that that's tough yeah so I mean it, it's kind of uh, it it's uh, um, you know it was a matter of me just saying that's it. I'm not going. Mm -hmm. I'm forget it. I'm not going to crawl back or, or call her. Or, 
you know. And don't listen to country music. Because the only thing I could be sure of is if we got back together again, the only thing I could be sure of was we'd break up again. Yeah. And you, you know, and I can't, that. I couldn't. I, I said, come on, I'm getting too old for this crap. You know? Yes, exactly. And then I got to tell you, ten, did I tell you this 10 years later, I'm working in New York and I hear from her. Really? What did you, what did you talk about? Well, you- I hear from her and uh, I go out to um, Cleveland to see her on a weekend and it's uh-huh. wonderful. It's just wonderful. It's like we just picked up where we left off. Oh, and, that's, that's and, nice. and so then she comes into New York to see me, and we go out to Fire Island, and she breaks up with me. Yes. She she came back one more time, ten years later, to just do it one more time. <laughs> you know. And she was always, I thought. I mean, I'm, I thought, I'm sure she's probably, she may be listening to this. Uh, don't feel bad, because you know that's exactly what happened. And I felt terrible, and uh, uh, quite frankly, uh, I, you know, I don't hate you for it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, she was very nice. She called me when I saw she must have seen on Facebook or something that I was going to Greece, which she knows a lot about. Yeah. And and called me with just some thing, you know, things to do and some islands to visit, and was very kind. I thought. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know, yeah. She was Greek. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. It's, Sexually, not that Greek. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll just leave that where it sits. We'll leave that right where it sits. <laughs> Although, when we were in Ephesus, and they're taking us on a tour of all, all of these upper middle class homes, they're ruins now, but they're, Ephesus is good at restoring them. Yeah. And so, we they, and a lot of restored tile work uh, depicting art scenes, and they show the... Um, sexual activities of all kinds uh, and it's in fact one part there was a, a sign or a placard that you will be seeing things of a sexual nature if you think that someone in your party would be bothered or offended then uh, make a note of this you may not want to go here yeah and there, there are only like a couple rooms that man they left nothing to the imagination it's like yeah. oh that's why they call it the Greek way okay <laughs> but it was well. I, the it, time, one time I was in Greece was when I spent it with her on Samos, um, yeah, which is this island right off the coast of uh, uh, Turkey, I think. Yeah, uh, she recommended Samos. We didn't get there, but yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice, very, and we had a wonderful time. It was wonderful, <laughs> you know, Hard work. wonderful, very romantic, uh, and, and so we got back together again. <laughs> Uh, I, mean, it's, I tell you, it's like a favorite shirt. You yeah. put it on and go, why did I ever stop wearing this shirt? Yeah. And, I mean, it's oversimplified. But or you ever go out with a guy again who you went out with, say, years previous, and you yeah. say, gee, I wonder why I ever broke up with this guy. And, and then, you, then you go out on the date and he starts doing his greatest hits and you suddenly realize why you did Yes, and when you are married to someone or you've gone with them a long time, you're going to hear the same stories uh, after, you know. And well, you waited, you waited a long time to get married. Oh, yeah, because I didn't know. I didn't want to mess it up. I didn't know if I had a handle on marriage and what a well, successful but, marriage required. And it's a lot of, it takes patience yeah. and it takes a lot of tolerance and it takes just getting used to another well, person. Well, you, you sound like you get you two get along great, you know. We do pretty, for the most part, we do. But yeah. you do argue, right? Pardon? Oh, yeah, we argue. Good. Yeah, we well, then no, that's not that's not un- unhealthy. We know. don't get into heated arguments very much. No. We argue, tend to differ on the same things over and over, which, you know, I thought, should we see somebody about this? And it didn't seem that bad, you know, because it's just... Something, and he, it's not like he sold me a bill of goods. I mean, he, uh, these characteristics, they they were apparent. I'll tell you, like, what's very funny is I was watching Lewis Black's act. Yeah. And he did this bit about saying that when you were a kid, you know, when you were younger, when you were in your teens, maybe early 20s, you were either pro, uh, pro uh, what was it, uh, uh, pro-abortion or anti-abortion. Mm-hmm. And now... He says, 
50 years later, okay, it's now you're either pro-life or pro-choice. He said, yeah, it, what progress we've made in 20, yeah. 50 years. Yeah, you know, all that's that all the progress we've made on this subject. Yeah, and most of these, um, the political correctness is people posturing at parties. It's about how we want to be perceived. And so these opinions are probably something they didn't even think of the previous month or two weeks, but somebody apart at a party poses a question. Well, how, how, do you, and, how do you feel about the fact that you live in a state where you can't get an abortion? Yeah, and see, I take a lot of heat from my California friends for living oh, in I mean, uh, Did they close down abortion clinics in uh, in Florida? No. Yeah, it's always in a state of flux. Yeah, because they'll make a ruling and then they'll come another ruling that will overturn it and appeal. And it's hard. I wouldn't, if I had teenagers, I don't think that I would buy a place in Florida because- Or Texas, that, or Texas. Yeah, right, because that abortion issue is just too fluctuating here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you just, I, I would want a place where my children could be guaranteed, as guaranteed as a constitution can do, um, the the rights that I wanted them to have. Well, I've, I don't want I, I've, to, I've often said that I don't personally believe in abortion. If, if, if Marjorie got pregnant, forget it, that would be a miracle. Uh, ah. But if, if some, I knew got pregnant by me, I would want to have the kid. You know, yeah. abortion this wouldn't be, but but still, it's her choice. Yes, I you think know. you should probably have. Uh, it would be nice if you'd have both parties. Well, I'm consent. saying that although I wouldn't do a, an abortion, okay, because that's the way I am, doesn't mean mm -hmm. I have to inflict on somebody else my opinion. Exactly, especially where yeah. their personal lives are concerned. Yeah, you know, and the that's best. that's why I'm pro pro choice. Yeah. Well, the best statement I ever heard about abortion was, if you don't believe in abortion, don't have one. That has come back to me hundreds of times. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pro-abortion. I, I, yeah. I, I don't like this pro-life thing yeah. or pro-choice uh, pro thing because, it's come on, let's be, let's say what it is. I'm for abortion. <laughs> okay. That's right. I should remember that big poster in your house in your apartment in San Francisco. I believe in abortion and so should you. No, there wasn't. Yeah. I mean, you don't know that, that kid in your wife's womb isn't going to grow up and be a serial killer anyway, and you're doing a favor. To the well, yeah. that's it. See, you're looking out for the rest you of know, humanity. I'm sure, I'm sure Mrs. Hitler exactly. didn't know what and, she was giving birth to. Well, and there are so many uh, unnamed and unknown factors with parenting, I think people should have to go through rigorous screening and, well, Hitler wanted that too, uh, and and uh, vetting before they did, become Did we parents. do a thing once, I think we did a thing once where I, I said, who in the world would possibly, if they had the name Hitler, keep it? Oh, you it, mean in this day and age? Yeah, in this day yeah. and age. And yeah. we found somebody in Philadelphia named Hitler. <laughs> and I called and, him on the show. Yeah. And I said, hello, uh, Mr. Hitler? And he said, it's pronounced Heitler. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> and I went, yeah, but it, it looks like Hitler, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you change it? And he said, it's my name. He said, I Exactly. Yeah. Why, why let a horrible person and a horrible memory Yeah. Dictate what but you're but I defy your... most people out there to find somebody in your neighborhood named Hitler. Yeah, right? not a lot. No. They're not bubbling up or Mussolini. Circle. How about try that one on for size? <laughs> Maybe if you went to Little Italy, you could yeah. find a couple of Mussolinis. Yeah, yeah. But, so anyway, so uh, did you have a nice New Year? It was okay. Yeah, we had friends over. You know, I'm going small because we had so much fun. You would put on big shows at the Palace of Fine Arts, yeah. and then we'd all go over to your house for a huge, fabulous party. Yeah. But now I like small is good, and so we have some friends that were kind of the reason that we moved to Florida, yeah. um, because my husband and the, the male, the, the man, yeah. had gone to high school together and had been best friends pretty much since Oh, then. okay. Yeah. That, yeah, that, so we have them over every New Year's Eve. 
and it's it's fun. Well, Marjorie has decided that she's not going to do another Thanksgiving. Oh, do you have them at your house? Yeah. And she oh, just said it afterwards. I had to rest for three days because my back was killing me, and so on. She said, we're, I, "If we're going to go do Thanksgiving, let's get a bunch of people and go to a restaurant somewhere." That's it. good. Yeah, because people yeah. fail to see the effort and the yeah. physical stamina you need to cook a Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we go to somebody else's house for Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine. It's a big Italian. deal. She's it's a big you know. deal. And it's a, an expensive deal when you're inviting people over for Thanksgiving. Yeah, and when I'm invited, I always say, can I bring something? And, I'll, and so we even uh, took pecans and something else we needed. I, I, I lo I'd love to do that if you called me up and said, can I bring something? I'd say, yeah, how about a turkey? Yeah. <laughs> 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 make sure it's still alive so yeah i just looked down fun. here we've run out of time i run over with you uh, you know we're uh, i swear to you i'm making plans that we're going to do something where we're going to do a whole hour together we're going to have other people with us and uh, you know really invoke the old days in the in the time being though i'm loving this oh this is terrific this is terrific yeah uh, so we'll do it again, shall we? Well, you know, if I ever stop doing the nighttime show where this is usually on, okay, uh -huh. I would still put this up on YouTube and do it as a show, you know. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah I would be up for anything yeah. that you have in mind because it's just a blast. Yeah. Well, let's see. Anything you I'm up for? Uh, well, we never slept with each other. Uh, we have no, not. I, okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Marjorie would mind. Yeah, I think she would mind. But uh, or, she, or she'd go, ah, oh, you're old friends. You two kids go at it. Yeah, yeah you not, not <laughs> Call me when you're done and I'll have five. It's not in the cards, uh, yeah. you know. To begin with, yeah. I, the what used to work doesn't work as well as it used to. Yeah, and men have an alternative. But when it just you're just not feeling it for you know, women, that kind of determines. Yeah, no, but, but I mean, you know, I've had all this prostate stuff. So, right. so consequently, they beat up on that little sucker, and there's nothing yeah. left. They, my my so urologist put his finger up my butt and said, "Oh, your prostate's flat now," and I'm going, "What does that mean? What all the air let, was let out of it?" <laughs> yeah, you know. it's like those balloons from Dollar but, Tree. Oh, your yeah, prostate's just you know it's flat, and I said, "Yeah," and so am I. I mean, when it comes to that, it's you know. I'm level, but anyway, no big. I don't want to get I don't want to get personal about this, folks. But you know, I have many. Yeah. Can I just say this? We're running over, but the hell with it. Um, say that aging sucks. I had, as you know, I had so many great years. Oh yeah. Using sure. using my my my. Uh, I never gave it a name, but my friend. Yeah. And, and I it would serve me so well for years. That I hit 80, and all of a sudden I got some problems with the prostate, and I need some operations. It doesn't really yeah. work that well anymore. I go, listen, it served me well. It I had a lot of fun well. times with it, and yeah. uh, the fact that it's not working now is nothing to be depressed about. No, you know? no, no, because you got you got a lot of mileage out of yours. Oh <laughs> God, oh God, I yeah. Yes. Who's and, that, who's uh, that, who's yeah. that who was that basketball player who said he had sex with ten thousand women? I can't remember. Oh, I remember there was James Brown, I think, said he had a few, but I can't remember the basketball well, player. Yeah. I remember mainly football players bragging about. Yeah, well I like to say I had so many sex with so many women that one night I was doing one found and then I named the basketball player in bed with me. You know. <laughs> we'd like cross paths and uh, you know. Yeah, it, it, he got either he got your sloppy second. Well, the right? one thing about old age, I got to say, it, 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 it gave me my dignity back because I spent. I love the way you phrase that. I spent yeah. most of my life, if you pardon the expression, chasing pussy. Yeah. All right. Humoring chicks to get. And, and by the way, none of which I think would ever come back and say I treated them badly or that I forced right. them or any of that because I didn't do that. You know. No, you were not that kind of. Well, I didn't want somebody who was having sex with me who didn't want to have sex with me. You know, I want this was this was a, this was a conquest for me. You know, getting yeah. somebody to so think well of me that they would allow me to invade their body. Right. You know? Yeah, you have to do some for uh, some. What's the word? So it's I don't think thing. the Me Too people could hit me with anything. I mean, there might be a nutcase out there that I had sex with who could, you know. 
that's what troubles me about the whole Me Too movement. But that's another subject. Well, I uh, we will get, well, let's get into that next time. But when okay. it comes to the Me Too yeah. movement, the thing that bothers me the most about the Me Too movement well, I have is, mixed feelings is, as is that family. there is absolutely people, all they have to do is accuse you and your career is ruined. That's yeah, and then and, you find out. The and by the way, they're never going to believe the guy. But take a guy like Kevin Spacey. Okay, no, yeah, it's not supposed to be a nice guy. He's an asshole. That's probably one of the reasons he's not working. Is once they had an excuse not to hire him, they didn't hire him. Okay, that being the case, in every one of the things he was accused of, there's a big thing in England mm-hmm. where there were a whole bunch of people that accused him of it. Went to trial, came out not guilty. Yeah. Up in and up in Connecticut, there was a guy who accused him. Went to trial. Uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't find him guilty. Okay. He has been found innocent of all charges against him so far. Okay. And yet, you see him working. No. So. No. Yeah. Justice. So, so everybody believes. The, the the person who makes the complaint, the person who is accused doesn't work ever again, and they were never on trial. It was never proven that what the person said was true. You know, it, it, that's, that's a, what bothers me. Yeah, that is a bothersome thing. Plus, I think the legal um, attitude, the legal climate is such that jump on that class action suit. They post class action suits. Well, you know Walmart. what you know what happened is they had a a day in which um, they said, okay, after this date, uh, uh, right now you can go back and make a claim on anything that might have happened to you in your life, okay? Mm -hmm. But on a certain date, that law is going to come to an end and you're going to have to do it within a certain amount of time. Yeah, so they did away with the statute of limitations, but then it came into being about a month ago and all these women at the last minute were charging guys with stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Just to get in under the wire. But the question yeah. is, why didn't they do it years ago? Why didn't they exactly. do it when it happened? You know? Exactly. And, and, and the thing is, these false, these women who make accusations just uh, willy-nilly, I mean, they are making everybody with a legitimate complaint. Well, bad. I think you'd find less of these frivolous actions by women who knew that if they were found to be not true, mm-hmm. could have legal action taken against them. That's it. That's it. I think there's way too little uh, proof required of people making the accusation. And I, I have to say this, and uh, I, 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 you know, I have reason to know it, and so on, that uh, the, the the people out there will always believe the woman before they'll believe the guy. It's getting less so, I think. Of course, I've never been, I've never wanted to go that litigation or about anything, even when I had some legitimate points. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is the fact that people accuse somebody of something and then there's no, no proof, they don't have to prove it or anything else, but that person is all of a sudden not working. It reminds, yeah. me, it reminds me of the McCarthy era, which I hated. Right. It completely yeah. does. I mean, what I've read about it. Yeah. And uh, we're just, life is too short. Hey, if the guy did something terrible to you and you can prove it or you can at least do it within reasonable, with a reasonable doubt or whatever, I don't mm-hmm. know, then okay. You know, I want to see him nailed to the wall. But right. do it in court, prove it, and, you know, but women, it was almost like they were saying, well, women don't have to prove it anymore because they were taking advantage of it. Come on, you're ruining people's lives by, you know, there are a lot of crazy women out there who are gonna charge a guy with something he never did. And there is an there is a reason for a lot of that craziness because we've only had the right to vote. And by the way, let me say there are a lot of horrible guys who would like, you know, rape a woman or force them or whatever, so. There are horrible you know, people out there. I don't, I I don't want people to think that I'm saying it's okay, you know, but no, 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 it's it's no. not okay to lie. Hey, listen, we've really run out of time. How much should we do here? Oh, 33 <laughs> minutes. Oh, boy. Marathon. I love you, dear. <laughs> I really do. I adore you. Uh, I love you, too. Most, and it just, it's fun to be reconnected. 
most constant woman in my life. You know, all, <laughs> do I get a do I get a plaque? Yeah, I'll, something like that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you next week. How's that? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, lovely. that's Lori Thompson. Bye, Lori. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, thank you, Lori, and we'll see you again next week. I just adore her. You know, I, you know, we we spent a lot of time together in our lives, and uh, with uh, and, and it's nice to see it continues as well. Okay, all right. Anyway, listen, uh, it's uh, time to go talk to our people, uh, and I'm going to admit them now so that we uh, we have them here, and uh, they're coming into fruition here. Oh, there's, uh, there's Pamela helping Jeff get his audio up. There's Charlie Wallace connecting to his audio. Uh, there's uh, Kevin. He's already connected to his audio. Uh, hello, Kevin. Hi, Alex. Okay. Hi, Hi Brian. Alex. Brian? Aren't you going to... Oh, I wanted to make sure you had audio. Okay. And, of course. Uh, yes. Ch Charlie? Yes. See? See? And Jeff, you're okay, too. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I guess Pamela feels that every night about this time she has to be standing by to make sure you, you get on correctly, right? Thank you, Pamela. We appreciate it. Mm, Thank I you, got this issue here. I'm not sure what happened, but what? I, I, he can't see you. I don't know what we can hear you, but can't we see can't. Me? Oh. No, I see what he did. He just opened another box. Okay. There we go. Can okay. You, can you see me oh. now? Now I can see you. Peekaboo. <laughs> well, that looks so weird because your hands are covering and you're uh, What? <laughs> wait, what, what, what? Wait a minute. Hold on. When you put your hands here. Then there's no facial feature, and then you're and your head in your head, so it looks like a big. Never mind. <laughs> look at the playback. Yeah, oh, oh wait a minute! Like this. See, and I'll look and see through my eyes. There we go. What's wrong with that? Huh? I know that's weird. Thank you, Ben. Flesh and ears. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. How are you? That's it. Good. How are you, Mr. Great day. I uh, commuted for five hours to work five hours. So what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. How did that happen? Well, usually it's an hour and a half to get to Lodi, and today it was two hours because there was an accident on the way, which is very, very rare going that way. And then coming home over the Sunol grade, they decided to close three three out of five lanes to go into two lanes to do some road work on the side at at 4 p.m. <laughs> and there's usually no traffic. So it was an hour and a half usually. It was three hours to get home. Unbelievable. Nobody, nobody goes that way at that time of night. No. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, the traffic is the other way. You know, so this way is usually they light. They don't care. And, and they block this. So Kevin knows uh -huh. the area very well. But uh -huh. it's an old grade when you're going down into Fremont. Is up some old grade, down into Livermore, and then the eight, the eighty four, and the split, and it was oh my gosh! So Boy, I wish I had a commute. <laughs> no, you don't. No, <laughs> after the second or third day, you say nope. I wish I didn't. Let's see here. Did I ever commute? Well, I, I did commute up to to Sacramento every day for like three days a week, actually, and that was pretty cool, you know. I didn't mind it when I was getting paid by the hour. I just sit oh, back. Yeah. Okay, we're here. Oh, we're <laughs> on the radio. But, just but sit there. What I did, what I did was, uh, I, uh, um, uh, I, I, I used to spend the time driving, listening to books on tape. Yeah. Right. You yeah. don't have a GPS. Now we just listen to Gabnet on tape. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. No. That, yeah, I used to. Before I called in, I'd always listen to Gabnet, and then. If I miss a show, I'll listen to it because it's an hour and a half. So when I get to work, you know, it's a good spy. If I if I don't go on the show, yeah. But this today I listened to the whole Cat Williams uh, interview, so that was two hours long. So that was a Cat that was a good time. Cat Williams interview. Wow, who's Cat Williams? He's a comedian. It, really? Yeah, he was on another podcast, just blasting a lot of people for taking jokes, stealing jokes, and it was pretty funny. Stealing jokes? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then now all the memes are actually, you know, like these video memes of like the actual joke. Like there's like one comedian, Mark Curry, and then they showed Mark Curry doing the joke. And then you see the guy who he claims stole the joke like three years later doing the exact same joke. It's pretty, pretty funny. OK, well, they, you know, people do steal jokes. There's no no question about that. But sometimes it's completely innocent. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, there's no. um there's no copyright on two people coming up with the same idea at different times. You know, uh, it depends on the joke. I mean, there's certain jokes that I think are so unique that when somebody does, uses them besides the originator, it's been stolen. You know, the, the one joke they show the example is Mark Curry says that their family was so poor. Yeah, they went to detail, but basically he said he was so poor that for Halloween, his mom put a box around just had a hole in a cup in a box and he wore the box and so he goes i guess i was ups and then another comedian said the exact same joke saying well we were so poor that we had a box around us and then oh i guess we're ups hmm. you know so it's just funny to see see some of that stuff i'm trying to figure out if that's something that's an innocent steal yeah or a actual steal i mean robin williams used to steal really steal yeah. You know, he didn't just... Yeah, and you wouldn't think he would because he's such an improvisation. You know, whenever I think of Rob Williams, I think of just a crazy guy just going nonstop, you know, and how... So he well, fed off I, the situation, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I talked to one comedian who was uh, driving with Robin in a car. They were going from mm -hmm. one place to another. That's what you do in a car, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he, um, he, he told him some kind of joke or something. And then Robin was looking out the window at the time, and about five minutes later, he turned around and looked at the guy and repeated the joke to him like it was his. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what Robin was like, this sponge. He was just taking everything around him, and he didn't know what he was stealing and what was original, you know. But he'd just be going at such a hectic pace, he'd just throw out lines, whether he'd heard them somewhere else or made it up himself. Mm -hmm. So Robin was uh, was uh, uh, you know was was um, I I called him on it actually he never liked the fact that I called him on it but everybody agreed to it I mean I remember once we were sitting in Cobb's Comedy Club uh, when it was down in the uh, 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 marina and there were a bunch of us all sitting around in the back room. And they all were sitting there watching Robin Williams on the Johnny Carson show. Mm. Right? And one by one, each comic would go, that's my joke. That's my joke. <laughs> that's my joke. That's my joke. There were comedians who, if they saw Robin walk into a club that they were working at, mm -hmm. they'd walk off stage. Yeah. They wouldn't do any more material. Because the problem with it is, is that a guy like Robin Williams steals your joke. And it's his mm -hmm. from then on. Because yeah. if a guy, if you go back and say, well, I'm going to use my joke anyway, and you <clears> use <throat> your joke, somebody in the club is going to say, oh, you stole that from Robin Williams. <clears throat> so that's the problem. You know, <clears throat> that, that was the problem. One of your, it's funny because uh, we're talking about San Francisco comedians, but one of your, one of your favorites is actually at the hearth, the one in San Francisco. Oh, now it came up. Uh, Scott Caporo. Yeah. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah. Gay comic. Yeah. Yeah. I told the story before, but when I saw him one time, he had the microphone, the foam part of the microphone, and he talked about being gay. And then he stuck his whole mouth around the whole foam piece. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I like Scott a lot. Scott was terrific. Mm. Uh, and Scott was, uh, when I, I say he's a gay comic. Today to say gay comic is, eh, so what, you know. But mm. back in the days when I had him on, right. that was a big deal because most yeah. comics didn't come out as being gay even though they were. I mean, there were several people mm -hmm. who were comedians in San Francisco who were gay uh, who didn't mm. say they were because they were afraid it would hurt them in the business, which it probably would. There were guys like Scott Capurro who said, I'm gay, and I'm going to say I'm gay, and he made his act about being gay. 
Uh, yeah. Today I, I would mean, hold I would hold that against somebody because you know to do your whole act about you being gay is you know it's a non-starter these days. But in those days it was a very brave thing to do. And yeah, he it, was he was very funny. And he was very funny. He was very yeah. funny. Um, and there was a Samantha, what's her name? I'm trying to remember her last name now. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and uh, she was she was a lesbian, and yeah. she was uh, she had no compunctions about it on stage either. And I I thought the world of her. I thought she was hilarious, you know, one of my favorite comics. Um, and uh, you know, so I mean, in those days, to come out and say you were gay in San Francisco was a little easier than if you said it in L.A., but you were really cutting down on your options, you know. Um, Although Capurro did wind up in, uh, let me see here, he wound up in, um, what was the what was the first uh, Star Wars movie? Not the original. I'm talking in order, the number order. Uh, mm. The one with the horrible kid in it, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, Dark yeah. There was a there was a race, and um, a Scott Capurro and uh, oh, what's his name? I have him on all the time here, or I used to have him on all the time here, were the voices of the announcers in, huh. in that oh, really? Lucas picture. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah. So, I mean, I was very happy for him that he got that. And, uh, yeah, so what have you. So, mm. Well, that's it for tonight, folks. Thank you very <laughs> much. We've had a good time and really enjoyed ourselves here. Um uh, Anyway, so um, I talked to my friend Chuck Farnham today, you know, his uh, his stepfather, stepfather who yeah. was also his best friend in high school. <laughs> oh my God. Jeez, I mean, you, you want to talk about, you know, rednecks? Come on. <laughs> this is, you know, this is killer. Uh, and he wouldn't hey, mind guys me. guys do it all the time. Huh? The guys do it all the time, dating women 20 years younger than them. That 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 show, um, sorry, the ninety day fiance <laughs> that I'm catching up on. There was a fifty eight year old with a nineteen year old from Philippines. Oh really? <laughs> a fifteen year old with a nineteen year old? No, no, fifty eight. Fifty eight year old guy. Yeah. With a nineteen year old, and she just turned twenty during the show. Twenty year old <laughs> Filipina girl. Well, God bless uh, her. Yeah. God bless her. All oh, give her due credit. God bless her. Right, right, uh, Charlie? God bless her. Right, Kevin? Charlie, you should go on that Jeff. show. You should go. 90 Day Fiance. You get the K-1 visa, get somebody over here from Philippines, and then there you go. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she was younger. That girl, that 20-year-old, was younger than his daughter. His daughter was 25, I think. <laughs> oh, my God. And so they met. Oh, my God, it's so awkward. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, somebody's somebody's got to be helping the elderly, you know. Yeah, <laughs> just doing her part. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, it, it, you know, I mean, so anyway, he, he, you know, his his father, his stepfather, was his best friend in in grade school. They've been friends all their lives. So I talked to him today. I said this is gonna be a hard one for you. And he said he lost his mother about a couple of months ago, right? Uh, but I said this had to be really hard for you because. You're not only losing your stepfather, but you're losing your best friend. He said, yeah, he says, terrible. It's horrible. You know, so anyway, my best goes out to him and we should hear from him next week. He'll probably explain a lot of it. Uh, he was there when the, uh, when his uh, best friend slash stepfather died. Um, so it was, you know, who knows you know just terrible um, stuff anyway so um any anybody here uh, uh trump today went to court and uh i guess got the judge mad at him again <laughs> we said i want to speak so the judge said you know you can speak if you if you don't try to politicize this thing and you don't try to turn it into a you know some kind of campaign stop. And he tried, and the judge finally looked at his lawyers and said, can you just uh, control your uh, client, please? 
And uh, it was the last day of the trial where they all gave their summations. And I think that is today the last day, Charlie? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think today was the last day. So anyway, you know. And before he came to work today, the uh, judge got a bomb threat at yeah, his home. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, no, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was for me, actually, because he didn't... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't do it, folks. Don't uh, you know? Mm. Uh, but well, Tony, Tony isn't here right now. So what happened? You know? Yeah, yeah. But you see, that that's what happens with with Trump. It's not it, it, these kind of things like bomb threats. I mean, come on, you know. To me, a bomb threat is nothing. I've had I don't know how many bomb threats in my lifetime, and uh, if somebody's going to bomb you, they're not calling ahead of time. Right? They're not <laughs> writing you an email or whatever they do these days. Uh, they just do it when you don't know it. Uh, so I've learned, I learned to take these things at face value. Uh, and while it can, you, know, you can say, oh, it's terrible and whatever, this is what happens when Trump goes after somebody. There are people <laughs> out there who then threaten the people who are, you know, Involved in whatever thing is happening to Trump at the time, I I'm, I wonder how many uh, how many uh, you know bomb threats Nikki Haley has had already. Mm -hmm. It's because she dares to run against him. Yeah, I love watching. Don't you love watching this whole thing that's going on in Iowa? They go, well, Nikki Haley's in second place now. <laughs> yeah, she's got twenty percent, and Trump's got sixty. <laughs> Oh, is that what it is now after the debate? Well, I think it was. I think he's got fifty-five, and she's got she's got uh, twenty. Because it was like thirty-nine, thirty-two before the debate, wasn't it? What thirty-nine, thirty-two? What Trump percent? I thought I saw a number that said that. That's New Hampshire. I don't know about oh, the rest okay. of the country. Yeah, is I don't know. I just saw a number. Is she doing better in New 32. Hampshire? Yeah, she's down to single digits. Yeah, I got to uh, I, I tell you about her. I don't like her. You know, I mean, I, I don't like her, and I don't think Charlie does either. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, I could live with her as president. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't like her. Um, I don't like her politics primarily. Um, but nevertheless, I could live with her if she became president, but I can't live with Trump. I'm sorry, you know? <laughs> I think we should just all commit mass suicide if he becomes president, you know? <laughs> hey. Either that or leave the country. Uh, is, uh, is, is England taking applications these days? <laughs> France taking applications these days? Well, I'm not going to Israel. That's for goddamn sure, yeah. you know? Uh, <sighs> oh, Canada so would be nice except it's cold. What? So Canada would be a nice place to go, except it's so cold. Yeah, well, it's cold <laughs> everywhere now. Did you see in, where was it, Lake Tahoe? Yes, Avalanche. We were Avalanche. just there at that, we were just there at that place. That's uh, uh, Tahoe Palisades, which was uh, Squaw Valley before. Oh, okay. So we, that's where we went uh, last, just right after Christmas. We, uh, I took the two girls and we went up mm -hmm. to Lake South Lake Tahoe. Then we went up to Squaw Valley, which is, you know, mm -hmm. where that, that they have was old mm -hmm. Squaw Valley. And then we went up to Reno. Um, it wasn't where mm -hmm. we were. It was the way up on the hill. But uh, when we went there, yeah. they have the Olympics there, which my mom sang at. So I wanted to go see their museum there, but it's up on top and they closed it because of the winds. So I think it probably got really windy and have an avalanche, though. Yeah, well, uh, let me tell you, the, the thing that was amazing about Squaw Valley, which I always knew as I was growing up, you know, uh, my father worked in Lake Tahoe, and we knew about Squaw Valley, and then they had the Squaw Valley Olympics, and mm. that was the Summer Olympics, uh, Winter Olympics, rather. Winter Olympics, 1960. Winter Olympics. And uh, and and uh, then they changed the thing to, what's the name they're, they're using now? Uh, now it's uh, Tahoe Palisades. Tahoe Palisades. And the reason they've changed it is why? I don't know. Well, they got wow. bought out. They got bought. Well, it didn't, wasn't it? They got bought because, you know, Squaw Valley was a known Squaw. name. Uh, yeah. Well, so I talked to the lady at the museum, mm -hmm. and they said 
you're allowed to use the Olympics, the Olympics, like the rings, and advertise that the Olympics were there for 50 years. After 50 years, you can't use that anymore. Oh. So unless it was a it was less it was a permanent standing thing. So they have two symbols like when you first drive in, they have the Olympics there and say, and then they have another one. Uh, but they said after that, you're not allowed to use that. You had that use the Olympics in part of your to use the three the, the five uh, yeah. circles, yeah. right? Rings, whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, all I'm saying is is that uh, uh, I think they changed the name to what Tahoe Palisades or whatever, yeah. uh, because they felt Squaw Valley was not right for the Native Americans. Yeah. It was Maybe not proper. Huh? It's politically incorrect. Politically incorrect. Mm -hmm. By the way, what did Native Americans call their women? Mm -hmm. I would squaws, imagine it was wow. squaws. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. how is that wrong? <laughs> I don't understand it. But I had heard several years ago that they were changing the name. And they were changing the name because they wanted to be politically correct, as you say. So so now it's Tahoe mm -hmm. Palisades, uh -huh. which I, I think <laughs> is, if you want my opinion, a real slight to the Palisade people. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I still say Squaw Valley, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah, well, I like to say uh, woo woo or dot head. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not mine, by the way. That's my friend. Uh, um, 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 oh God, my mind is. I just that's can't funny. remember names. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> my former producer. Uh, 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 oh, uh, Albert. Albert. Albert Brunoso. Yeah. 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 They call him Hanky Head. Yeah, what? School. What did you say? The uh, the 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 you remember the ones who had hankies on. They used to call them Hanky Heads. Hanky Heads. I never heard that. He's after showing the blow, and he used to say he used to have the little thing on his head, like the I don't know if they were Egyptian or not. We had like a, it looked like a hanky on his head. I said, what is that? Well, you know, for, <laughs> for years they told us now it's proper to say Native Americans, right? Yeah. How many of you still t use the term Indians on occasion? Me, I by accident. Time. Yeah. Oh, I always say Indians. Yeah, but what, Tony, what do you call Chinese? I call them chinks. Oh, I jeez, them oh, almighty, them. stop it. <laughs> Don't I encourage him. Chinese Don't food. encourage him. <laughs> I know. I, I mean it. It's, 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 it's a compliment. It. My mom used to say that. I was to get... The menu. We're gonna to order to chinks tonight, Anthony. Well, right. See, I mean, that, but that's the thing, though. See, it, it, what, the Chinese food yeah. sometimes was referred to people as chinks. Yeah, Alex, <laughs> like, she ordered so much. I told you we got to. I, by the one. way, let me just tell you, folks. I never use yeah. that term for Chinese food. I I can see you saying. Hmm. What? <laughs> Chinese. You Perfect. Said, uh, right? Well, no. What did you say? Say it again. You froze. Oh, I could see you saying, "I'm gonna have Chinese food tonight." Yeah, that's what I say. I, of course. Let's yeah. have Chinese food. <laughs> My Italian grandfather used to say, why do you always go out with those slant-eyed girls? Because <laughs> they're gorgeous. Oh, I'm sorry. I know, exactly. <laughs> that's a good reason, I, I would yeah. say. What, your grandfather couldn't answer that question for himself? No. And then I was dating this one, uh, one friend of mine, this girl, Lisa, and then I, he said, oh, I love Lisa. Why don't you get together with her? And I said, she's Vietnamese. And he goes, yeah, but she doesn't look like it. I'm all oh, my God. <laughs> That's funny. I think all the Italian, Italians are the funniest when it comes to racism. I'm sorry. Well, I told you my uncle used to call my Chinese friend chopsticks. My mother got so <laughs> insulted at him. She says, what are you doing? He's got a name. I says, I can't pronounce it. You know, if we were, if we were doing this show right now, yeah. On regular broadcast, I wouldn't have a job tomorrow. <laughs> Would no. you get a job? Yeah. Already. Can you can you get away with talking on this well, on regular know, radio? I gotta, when you're on I gotta tell you, I've always been bothered by the fact that we have no sense of humor about ourselves. Yeah, you know, I mean, I like. We've humor. lost all sense of humor about ourselves. Um, uh, if you went back to the older old days of vaudeville, there were what we called uh -huh. dialect acts. 
there were guys who worked with Jewish accents, German okay. accents, uh, uh, you know, sometimes they do Asians, you know, whatever. And yeah. nobody seemed to mind their yeah. particular race funny, being, angry, being so. kidded, being kidded. Kitted lovingly, not kitted hatingly, but yeah, I mean, kitted lovingly. You mean lovingly. a good thing, right? Yeah. I'm telling you, you like right now, Don, Don Rickles could not do his act today. Oh, no, I love no. Don Rickles. I was watching all the interviews. It's the one. It's so funny. Have you heard of Lisa Lampanelli? Uh, no, I know of her. Yeah, I I know know of her. her. Yeah. yeah. So she's sort of like the Don Rickles, right? She's like in the yeah. crowd, you know, making fun of all the people. They said that she quit comedy just because of all that stuff. Because her whole act was like making fun of different nationalities and gay people and mm. old people. And for the most part, that's why Bobby Slayton has quit. Yeah. You know, exactly that reason that he said, especially when he went out to colleges, he said oh, that yeah. was the worst. You know, mm. we were crazy. they'd start booing him because he mm. had a whole bit where he'd get going on Chinese and. Things yeah. like that, you know, but, he, but he'd go after everybody and he was loving about it. You know, there wasn't any hate involved. Uh, but it just seems that people can't laugh at themselves anymore. Alex, what do you think that is? Is it a generational thing now, maybe, or no? I think, like, it's, I, I think it's stupidity. I think it goes hand in hand with a country that uh, that may re-elect Donald Trump. Okay. Yeah, you know what? That's a valid point. Yeah, if anybody thinks he's a good idea, I heard you in the beginning. Did you see him today? I heard you talking about him. He came outside the courtroom and he was standing by the flags like he was the president. So, this fucking guy. Yeah, yeah. No. I can't take him. I can't take him. To think I was going to vote for this guy three years ago, I was joking. <laughs> yeah. How can I say that? <laughs> I've never given you much credit for brains, okay? No, so, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was because I was a preemie three months early. Come out early. Let's go. Really? And you're still working three months behind, huh? <laughs> exactly. My mother fell down the stairs. <laughs> Your mother fell down the stairs? We, right over here on the side, I told Shecky this when he came up. There was three little steps going out the side door. She, her foot got caught, and she fell down two steps, and she went into labor. And, my brother and so what do, you, what do you say to people when they come over? That's where I was born. Yeah, right on the side. <laughs> Leo, I think my water broke. <laughs> oh, no, your, your mother's hospital? water wasn't broken. It was shattered. Exactly. It's like, oh, man, I don't believe this. Did she make it to the hospital? Actually, she did. I was born in Brooklyn, but I was in an incubator for like... My brother said a good five months. If there was no incubator, I was dead. I had the five last right Five months in an incubator? Yeah, Alex, I had the last race my brother, older brother told me, because he's about 60. He says, I couldn't see you because only my mother could go in, and my father, they would, but my father had to see me by the glass. Well, so he says, they had the last rights on They had to do the last, last rights. Why? Yeah, when I was born. Well, that's great, because when you are dying this time... <laughs> You, I got you know, it already. You got it already. You don't <laughs> have to have the last rites. Exactly. Uh, you know, used to tell as you're everybody, dying, you can say to the priest, no, I had it retroactively. You know, you know what? She used to tell people, I don't want to make it about me, but I always remember this. When anybody used to come over the house, because she was outgoing, and she used to say, he's the miracle child. Look how small he was. She used to take my picture out. I looked like a chicken in the hospital. And I'm, I'm ever be like, oh, my God, look how big he is now. I hate to tell you this, Tony, but you still look like a chicken. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I like chicken, actually. So I should cook it tomorrow. Oh, you know what? I got to tell you one thing, Alex. You're right. Those rotisserie chickens from Costco, yeah. every time I go there, I got to buy one. Oh, they're the yeah. best. They're the best. They're the best, yeah. I had one last weekend. And you know what they do? They only keep them out there for 90 minutes. And if they've been out there 90 minutes, they take them out, off, the, off the shelf. You know what they do with them? No. They make them into the chicken salad. They make them into oh, the so chicken soup. That's why it's always moist there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I bought one at BJ's. So they, they, dry. I had to they, throw that out. They use all those chickens for all the other stuff that they have chicken in. You know, the oh, chicken, I got the chili chicken and penny chicken? pasta, Great. you know, and so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah. Oh, I love that story. Yeah, every time I go there, I got to get a chicken to go home. Yeah. So that's why. I actually mm -hmm. went there one day. I'm telling you, this is just horrible. I went there one day and they ran out of chicken. Oh, and shit. they they can only make them so fast, but they've got yeah, I know. Sometimes they've, they've gone and going to get away. Lots of rotisseries with these things. Yeah, they're gone. You see them cooking on the thing. Yeah, yeah. And so it's a it's a big deal, right? But they, were, they ran out of them, and I everybody was much. going nuts because they couldn't <laughs> buy their out. chicken. 
and they were all standing around like little kids, like uh, that's me waiting for every, chicken. I gotta get one. Every, every time I go there, the brother shopping. Out. I'm waiting. What do you say? Every time you go there, they run out. No, every time I go there, there's people standing around. Yeah, I'm standing to come out. Yeah, and they're they're all and they'll fight to get to the one. Well, I won't kill the old lady. I'll just take one. I mean, one. these old ladies with their carts will ram you over to get the. Uh, yeah, they get kind of active there. Do you know? Yeah, that yeah. is in fact their best-selling item at oh, Costco. Oh, I love it. Wow. Hey, it Besides even the hot the dog. Chicken, Alex, well, I can no, buy it. Number two. Number, what's the number two, do you think? The hot dog. Oh. The hot dog and Coke. No. Nope. Is it a prepared food, yeah, Alex? That's what they what say do you is... need after you eat their chicken? Oh, wait, you're oh, right. Paper. That's right. There you got it. Yeah, <laughs> I got the TP in the closet right here. Yeah, I want it. <laughs> and everybody went crazy when they, were, when they ran out of toilet paper. I said, I how does this that. happen? You could have sold that on, on eBay and you would have got good money for the toilet paper. COVID was bizarre. How would toilet paper? And then I remember going to Costco and you look up at the shelves and they were empty. I took some pictures. They were empty. Yeah. All the, the levels up. It was crazy. Like I'll, I'll give you a story, paper. though. I, um, I took Marjorie and I, you've been going to Costco forever. And whenever I would go to get toilet paper, she wanted Scott's. But oh, I the, whole, totally the whole thing I hate about Scott's is every one of the rolls is wrapped in paper. Mm -hmm. So to begin with, you're, you're wasting a lot of paper by doing that. And I said to her, why don't we just get the Kirkland? She says, no, That's I don't want That's what I, I get, Kirkland. You say five bucks. Wait a minute. I don't yeah. want that. I don't want that toilet paper. I said, five That's bucks cheaper. She said, I don't want it. So now we go out to California and we go to my business manager's home and we're staying with them. And she goes into the bathroom and comes out of the bathroom. Goes into the bathroom, goes out of the bathroom. I said, have you used the toilet paper? She said, yeah. I said, how, how was it? She says, it's really terrific. What kind is it? I said, Kirkland. There you go. Bro, it's too pliant to my brother. Come on. <laughs> it's great. It's terrific. It's, exactly. It's, it's softer than any of the others, uh, except Charmin, which is, is too soft. Is that the soft. one with the teddy bear Charmin, Alex? No yeah, one Charmin with the is too soft. Yeah. Charmin, yeah, yeah, Charmin is too soft, and and all the others your finger goes through, and yeah, I mean, you know by the time you're finished, you've actually wiped your butt with your fingernail. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's in my bathroom now. Come yeah. on, yeah, but they they yeah, really they really uh, um, uh, that's their second largest thing, and of course their hot dogs do very well. I've never had. Yeah, I buy the hot dogs too, Alex. Yeah, on the yeah. way out, I'll get one, or I'll buy the. I don't go to Costco anymore, though. I don't go there anymore because I just order by Instacart. Oh, oh, you do the Instacart. We go out there like once a month. It's nice. You know, and I'd like to go out there because, uh, you know, it would be, um, it just, mm -hmm. I, I just kind of enjoy the, the, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, the ritual of going to Costco. Yeah, you go around to the different aisles. To, I like well, that. Well, to begin <laughs> with, it, one of the things you, oh, I always liked playing was, now where did they put the soda? Sure. You know, because I they always change. I the they ice. always change where they put yeah. stuff. Drives me crazy. They ran out of butter last week, and they had to go to Kifu for it. Did you have regular butter? Land the lakes? No, we only have a. I can't believe it's not butter. I couldn't believe it. I said, "All right." Well, they've got their Thank butter. You, you know, they've got their own. They've got their own butter, and it, it's fine. You know what I yeah. was told, and here's the here's the story that I heard. So when you go to Costco. If let's say you buy, you want something like you want uh, tuna fish, okay? So you got mm -hmm. chicken of the sea here, and then next to it you got Kirkland. Which are you going to take? Which mm -hmm. which do you think is going to be the better I'm tuna? Take the Kirkland. Which do you think is going? to But here we're talking about food because I prepare it myself. Yeah, well we're talking we're talking you know food. The fact is that Kirkland goes to somebody like oh chicken of the sea and says. We want you to put tuna mm -hmm. under our name, make cans with our name on it, and we want you to make it better than yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what they say. Wow. And they go along with it because how much are they going to sell? They're going to sell tons mm -hmm. of this goddamn stuff. So they always yeah, put they a, make that out. Most of the time they put the Kirkland right next to the uh, chicken of the sea. You know, but it's so. cheaper. Mm -hmm. The Kirkland batteries are Duracells. Oh really? Yeah. Just put triple A's, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it but but they always say to these people, it's gotta be better than your brand. 
You know, you've got a better quality than your brand is. And then so that's the way they run. Now the other question is, how do they make their money? Memberships. That's all. Yeah. 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 They that's only probably. raise the price on everything in their store by 15%. That's the oh. only margin they have. Where they really? make their money is on the the uh, the uh, memberships. Do you have any memberships they have? I'm afraid to think something like I don't know a hundred million. Oh, no. I mean, huge no. amount. Did you ever watch the documentary on that? On the uh, the the club stores, it's on. I think it's on Netflix. Really? The documentary on how Costco started and the guy that started it and how he got bounced around by all these other. You know the WalMarts and the well, Sam's you had Club Price Club. You had Price Club, which Price was, Club. That's right. where, yeah, that's where and, it evolved and from. And eventually, they bought Price Club, yeah. right? Because he got screwed by Price Club. How did he get screwed? The guy by that, him? It, it, I, I saw it so long ago, I can't remember how it all happened. But this this whole documentary goes through this whole thing on on the whole membership programs and how Price Club became the number one butt kicker in the whole industry really? i mean they're even they're even actually better than the the sam's clubs and the the walmarts and all that stuff oh yeah well I, you know this all... guy was literally on his in, in his down to his last 400 bucks or something well i think it was basically costco and and um and price club yeah that were there in that they territory were it out. you didn't yeah. have you didn't have a sam's club yet you didn't have the, the yeah you know the other but they were all coming on well yeah, you did have walmart which was cheaper than anybody else but i'll never remember forget i i bought something i, I never went to walmart and, and i needed something and it was a sunday and i was up in uh, up in northern california visiting a woman i knew up there and she said well let's just go to walmart and get it okay and i can't remember what the item was even <laughs> and i went and we got it and uh i was very happy. Maybe maybe it's just that we needed a lighter for to light joints or something. I can't remember what the item was, but I bought the item, took it out of its packaging in the uh, in the uh, uh, parking lot, mm -hmm. and by the time we got home, it was broken. <laughs> you know, and I suddenly said, "Well, I guess I know the quality of Walmart now." Yeah. You know, so that was Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but you say if Costco was on its last leg, how did they wind up buying? No, Price it wasn't Club? Costco that was on its last leg. It was the the owner, the 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 guy, the CEO or whatever his name was. I can't remember the name, but he was he was screwed over by the partner that he was in. You know, oh, okay, with. okay, yes. And he was down. He was screwed over by the partner, and they became Price Club, and Price Club and Costco uh, became you know, um, what you call competitors. And then the guy that had caught, took on, you know, decided to do Costco, took over and bought out the price club guy that screwed him over. Mm. But price club was still existed at that time. Yeah. And so they, then, they then he, bought pr price club and it was yeah, for a while it was away. called price Costco. I remember. Yeah. For a short yeah. time. But he was, he was down to his last, you know, you know, you know they're wallet. the biggest distributor of food and 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 goods in this country. Literally the biggest, I think, in the world. And it's like if you're if you're a you know tuna fish company, mm -hmm. you want to get in Costco. You want to get into Costco. You'll do anything you can to get into Costco. And if you lose Costco, I mean, here's what I don't get. Like I like this. Okay, this is my favorite. The, Ice, all right. I get that too. That is good. Huh? No sugar. No, that's good. I buy that too. And uh, no sugar, and it's really yeah, good. It's good. It and good. and they they every now and then they have them by the case at Costco. And yeah, they have them for like six months at Costco, and I really am happy, and I'm living large life large, and all of a sudden, they don't carry it. Yeah, so, they, they stop, and I don't know why. And then all of a sudden, maybe it'll start. Doing it against, you know, and I think they have like a pissing match or something with ice or whatever. And well, you don't want to play our game, well then, you know, you can go screw yourself. So I get mad at that. 
And I'm not saying that their Kirkland isn't just as good. I have to admit that when I do try the Kirkland, it really is almost as good. But I like my ice, okay? Mm. And uh, uh, I, I get a little pissed at that, you know. I, that's why I say whenever I go there, I have to find out where they put the soda, you know, because they keep sometimes changing. They do. Sometimes they don't have it in for a while. I know no, they move it all over the place, though. You have to go yeah, look it's hard for to it. Find it. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find they're the always switching yeah. stuff. Well, well, they have a, they have a, uh, a way that they price their stuff so you know, like you get. You, I know that yeah. I can't remember them all, but there's a way that they mm. you can tell when they're going to get rid of stuff next month. If they yeah. have an asterisk on their price, that yeah. tells you that they're going to go away next month. And if mm. there's a, a nine, nine, 99 or seventy nine, eight, that, seven, yeah, right. Yeah, and the color. The well, wait, color. wait, 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 wait. Explain this to me. And if it says seven, yeah. what? You there, can look it YouTube up on the web. Video. Yeah. Yeah. There's a YouTube video that shows like how when you look at it, the price will tell you, like Kevin's saying, like if it's going to be going out of out yeah, of there for a while. Two months or whatever, and then they're going to get rid of it. And then the next month, <clears throat> it'll be an asterisk next, next to it on the price, you know, the price tag there. Yeah. And that means that it'll be gone next month. Yeah. So if you ever see the asterisk, I watch for that all the time. But Home Depot does that. All the big stores like that do that. My, yeah. my I didn't know that. that when, yeah. and, and, and I, I would imagine if you go to their site or whatever, and they have, they must have the asterisk YouTube. there too. YouTube, YouTube, they have videos of those. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, Jeff. I, I have one crazy thing. Is I go to one store or I can go to another store. And, you know, at the same time, and it depends upon where we're going and we'll stop there or whatever. But the thing that bugs me is both stores are just the opposite. Everything's on the left side as compared to everyone's on the right side. Wow. Yeah. And it's really a pain in the neck. Uh, John Redshaw wrote here that Costco kicked me out for taking only one item. Really? <laughs> no, well, come on. They can't kick you out. I, I find that hard to believe because I'm sure some people run it just who live nearby, run right in to just get yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, they can't say you can take it. Hey, I need a bottle of ketchup or something because we ran out of ketchup, but you don't want to have to buy everything else. Yeah, but it's probably the ketchups are connected. So you have to buy two of them. Well, I, yeah, I, I used, yeah. to, I used to have a joke about that. I said that Costco was starting, oddly enough, an adoption agency. Uh, the only thing is you have to take twins. Uh, <laughs> and they're taped together. That's yeah, right. So. Oh, well. <clears throat> what did you take? So if you cut it yourself, yeah. it won't sell it to you. Yeah, well, right. He said he was joking. <laughs> I was yeah. joking. Oh. I'm joking. What does it say on your shirt today? Be greater than average. Oh, that's mm. nice. I like that. Cowboy shirt. How many T-shirts do you own? Uh, Seventy-nine at the last count. Is that Whoa. all? I th Is that all? Yeah, because yeah. every time we see you, you're wearing a that's different. How many I got stacked up on my dresser. <laughs> well, I just started co collecting them about four years ago. So. I bought these. You know the ones that. I, 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 you can't even see it anymore. It says, uh, not, you know, 1939, yeah, which is the year I, I was born. So I bought, bought a bunch of these. But you know what? It's fading out. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm worried about that, that that's saying something about my likelihood of surviving <laughs> over the next 10 years, you know. You got to buy a new one every year. Well, they're all fading. Yeah. I should complain to the company that makes them. Why? Why do they fade? Because you can make T-shirts that don't fade, you know. So, but I, I suppose I can buy them at Costco, you know. Uh, <laughs> how many buy? How many people have bought clothing at Costco? Yeah. I bought pajamas. Oh, I have. Yeah, yeah. I just my people there. Yeah. What'd you get? I think so. What'd you get, Jeff? Yeah, socks and underwear. That's my. I did the PJs, Jeff. Yeah. Socks and underwear. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, because I I buy my socks from uh, uh, what's the name of the company again? Bombas. 
That's and, the one uh, that gives away the... Huh? They give away some money. Yeah, every time we buy a pair of socks, we give away a pair of socks to yeah. some underprivileged people or whatever, you know. And I also, we have... The, here. Here's the newest thing we bought. Wait a minute, let me take it off here and show it to you because I can't raise my foot up that high. Hey, hey, keep the pants on. Yeah. <laughs> These things. Oh... Oh, what are they, like like slippers, like grippies, like right? Yeah, they're like they are slippers, but uh -huh. we Marjorie has a whole bunch of them, and I bought. I counted them up now. I bought. I bought like seven of them, and they're they fifty up, bucks. Yeah. They're fifty bucks a piece. Oh, wow, and that's a lot. I have three hundred and fifty dollars worth of these <laughs> things in the house. Yeah, you know? I do. But I like them. I really like they them. You must keep your feet warm though when it's cold, well, right? Yeah, so more like... than that, it's just you know. I mean when. Uh, uh, I don't know what, but the floors around here are very slippery. Uh, you know, yeah, floors. Yeah, the floors yeah. And these have like uh, suction on them. Yeah, I was going to say that's what I have the yeah. cup stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, I buy all my uh, all my socks from and and my underpants now from uh, uh, from uh, uh, Bombas. So. Yeah. By the way, that you knew you know where they where I first saw them. They were trying to sell themselves to the panel on uh, Shark Tank. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. And I think nobody nobody tried to go into business with them. <laughs> or maybe somebody did eventually. I think Damon Johns went back after the fact and went to the company and said, I'll buy in on it. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 But, I mean, it's turned into a major, major sock company. I mean, yeah. amazing how how big this yeah. company has gotten. Oh, gee, we're almost we got two minutes left. I didn't realize that time flies by when you're having a good time. This has been a very nice, happy, positive show. Yeah. No yeah. weather today, huh? No yeah, crazy cool. weather. No crazy yeah. weather. Well, out in California, up in the Sierra, they have it. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, elsewhere in the country, it's terrible. Yeah, when we went when we went just after Christmas on the twenty seventh, let's say in Reno, there was no snow up there. Then they're posting pictures today of snow everywhere up there, and I heard it's snowing in Vegas too. Really? Yeah, but you know what? It hasn't really snowed in New York City for over three years. Wow! I know we got a little flurries the other day, right? There were nice flurries. The flurries. That was though. it. They didn't stick. Yeah. You know. I know. I was hoping for an inch. Yeah, and I'm just going, what What the hell is this all about? You know, I don't Remember know. Remember when you used to stick your camera out there and just film the snow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had what I called the, the uh, slow television. <laughs> yeah. you like and and I would get more things. people watching. Like, it, one day it was, uh, it was raining, and I said, look at the rain uh, uh, drying on the side of the building. And we were watching <laughs> rain dry. <laughs> And that was slow television. Yeah. Relaxing, yeah. That was more people than watching us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it used to be my job. That, it used to be your job? Yeah, when I was like a teenage. Or you'd go to everybody's street. And oh, you shovel. Oh, you so shovel you the take snow. some of the shovel off? Yeah, I used to shovel off. Out. Out here, yeah. My uncle, it, my uncle up in uh, Al uh, Albany... Uh, got a heart attack and died from shoveling snow. Oh my God. A lot of people die from shoveling yeah. snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's you know. Well, anyway, I'm running the theme now. I tell you that because you can't hear it. But, you know, we've determined that it's because it's Zoom doesn't let you. Okay. Hey, this has been a lot of fun tonight, uh, yeah. and uh, we got past uh, the whole racist part of the program. And into talking about Costco, yeah. you know. Um, we're not racist. But I, we're not racist. Hey, you know, I got to tell you, racist jokes, some of them were very funny. And yeah. and, and many we're times not, at my expense. Tony, Tony, what do you call when you order sushi? I actually don't like sushi. Okay. I never had I, it. I didn't want to go there anyway, so go ahead. <laughs> okay. I don't okay. what I would call Anyway. It. Everybody, <laughs> thanks Jeff for being here tonight. Thank you, Brian. Always good having you here. Always good having you here, Charlie. Kevin, a pleasure, a privilege, and of course Tony. 
I'm not like, getting. We won't even talk to you anymore. Okay, there we go. That's it. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. As they all hang up themselves. Uh, listen, uh, we got uh, the intersection next with Amy Manuel, and uh, she'll be taking your calls at Skype on Skype at uh, GabNet Live. I'll see you again uh, for our last show of the week tomorrow night right here. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.